And I would like to invite our uh, first speaker, Dr. Prasal Janshi, uh, to share sort of his vision, his vision for the future and an aspect of his practice, uh, which is the management of ocular graft versus host disease. Dr. Janshi is a professor of ophthalmology at the University of Pittsburgh School of Medicine. He is known to corneal specialists worldwide, and it's an honor to have him as part of the program. Vishal, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Can everyone see my screen and hear me well? Perfect, perfect. All right. Okay. Well, well, you know, everyone has thanked everybody else. So we'll just move on with the presentation. Um, uh, my topic is ocular graft versus host disease. And um, I have to say five years ago, this was uh, something newish to me, if not new. But if, if you are like me, if you work in a hospital, which is next to a cancer center, well, I can tell you over the next five years or so, you're going to see a host of these patients and you got to know what to do with these patients. They can be really challenging to manage. I do not have any financial disclosures that are relevant to this talk. So I'll be looking at uh, presenting an overview of GVHD, current treatment options for GVHD, uh, some new treatments on the horizon. This is an exciting part. And, you know, try and see if you can prevent ocular GVHD. It's going to be challenging though. So... I'm just going to reduce this. Okay. Um, what happens in, in, in allergenic uh, hematopoietic stem cell transplantation, HSCD, basically uh, after total body irradiation and chemotherapies and anti antibody treatment to kill the cancer cells. Um, traditionally, we used to get the donor uh, heme stem cells from the bone marrow. Nowadays, they can be used from the umbilical cord as well. Uh, once, you, once you do that, the, it sort of activates the donor the uh, the T cells, which causes the graft versus host disease, which further causes a multitude of problems throughout the body. And over the past fifteen years or so, people have been trying to publish more and more to highlight the ocular problems that are associated with graft versus host disease. So uh, GVHD is of two types, acute and chronic. Uh, as I mentioned, it is a T-cell mediated disease. Ac acute GVHD is seen in the first 100 days of the of transplantation. Multiple studies have shown that if uh, uh, ocular involvement happens in acute GVHD, it's actually a prognostic, poor prognostic factor for uh, which is associated with higher mortali mortality. Um, common ocular symptoms include excessive tearing, redness, eye pain, conjunctival involvement is the highlight of acute GVHD, acute ocular GVHD causing hyperemia. Chemosis is massive sometimes. You see pseudomembranes, symblephron, almost like a, uh, a sort of like a psychiatric shield disease presentation, but in acute form. Um, I have seen some patients with corneal ulceration in acute GVHD. They're really, really difficult to manage. Uh, saving the eye is very difficult in these patients. Chronic GVHD is, is what we see more commonly, fortunately, uh, in the clinic. The pathophysiology of chronic GVHD is less understood. Ocular involvement is high. Uh, 40 to 60% of these patients will have ocular involvement of some sort at, at some point in their, in their disease. Common ocular symptoms are just dryness. Um, and everything sort of ensues after that. Uh, three important processes, which are really important if you see these patients. Lacrimal gland dysfunction. So the, basically these glands are being destroyed in these patients, uh, even bimobian gland dysfunction, which is actually as bad as lacrimal gland dysfunction. So you have a multitude of, of uh, phenomena happening, which lead to a poor ocular surface. Corneal conjunctival inflammation is also another highlight of the disease. And I'll show you some pictures what I mean um, uh, by saying corneal conjunctival inflammation. You will see how the dry eye in GVHD is, is quite distinct, quite different from the usual dry eye that we see. Less commonly in chronic GVHD, um, we see patients with scleritis, uveitis, vitritis, hemorrhages on the retina and cotton wool spots, and also choroidal detachment. So it is very important that you... Uh, look at the disc and macula in these patients in every single follow-up. So all our patients are dilated um, if they can sit up right uh, when they're in the clinic. So some of the pictures, so uh, these have been collected over the past few years in my clinic. Um, I, I use uh, staining and the rattan filter, which has been really, really helpful. Uh, what I have noticed is that the corneal staining can sometimes be very patchy, uh, one quadrant would be involved focally in these patients and the rest of the cornea might not look too bad. Uh, we do see a lot of filaments. Filaments are seen more commonly in acute ocular GVHD. 
But in chronic ocular GVHD or on acute on chronic GVHD, you can see some, some filaments. And as I mentioned, meibomian gland dysfunction is, is the highlight of the disease, causing a lot of photophobia in these patients. Another patient showing sort of a, a corneal involvement just in one quadrant, and you can see those clumped filaments. This is a patient with chronic GVHD with patchy corneal straining. Another patient, uh, you can see uh, how the cornea, the, sort of there's epithelial cell clumping, which is which causes a lot of foreign body sensation, um, uh, grittiness, and also photophobia in these patients. Corneal conjunctival involvement, you can see the, the, the amount of staining, is, it's just unprecedented. It's just, it's just too much on the cornea. Also, the conjunctival involvement is, is quite, it's quite uh, significant in these patients on, in these two pictures. Another patient uh, with the staining of the conjunctiva and the cornea and one filament. I showed these pictures uh, earlier also. Um, this is a patient with, with chronic, almost burnt out disease, uh, ocular GVHD. A patient has been stable on serum eye drops uh, with, with massive corneal scar, with tarsal scarring. So um, the glands are obliterated and the subtarsal fibrosis sort of takes over in these patients. So the, the dryness is, is almost permanent. Uh, this is an unfortunate patient. He was uh, had GVHD with keratoconus. He was using lenses, um, contact lenses. So he came back with, with a massive infection. Uh, we cultured him. Uh, the thinning was quite significant. He grew scedosporium, fungus, and pseudomonas together. Um, we almost lost the eye, uh, but I think the patient was more hopeful than we were, which actually helped did a tarsorophy, a long-term treatment. He ended up with a corneal scar and I just uh, operated on him uh, a couple of weeks uh, ago. And this is sort of day one post-op. Uh, so, so these complications are, are commonly seen in these patients. This is another young patient with acute on chronic GVHD. Look at how the epithelium, uh, so the epithelial defect is, is so chronic, almost calcareous degeneration, which is also a hallmark of chronic GVHD and corneal involvement and corneal involvement. Um, the patient was on systemic treatment, systemic steroids. This is the first presentation. Um, uh, I started the patient on serum eye drops, but the patient never came back for follow-up. Unfortunately, we lost the patient. He passed away within a month of his follow-up. So treatment-wise, it is important to reduce ocular surface inflammation to prevent any psychiatrical changes. Very, very important to speak to your to oncology, hematology team. Uh, uh, you gotta let them know what you are seeing in, on the eye so that they might be able to titrate the treatment. I stay in touch with, with my hemonc team all the time for, for these patients. Um, prevention of tear evaporation, usual stuff, more aggressive though, more warm compressors, lid scrubs, lid hygienes. Topical erythromycin ointment does help and when the MGD is really bad. I, I try and not use too many tetracyclines in these patients just because they're on, on so many drugs already. Moisture chamber goggles do help. My patients are very happy using moisture chamber goggles. Uh, Preservative-free artificial tear drops and ointments. Acetylcysteine, difficult to get in the United States, easier to get in the US, uh, in, in India. Uh, good for filamentary keratitis. Um, some patients, very few, uh, we do start on five milligram uh, twice a day or thrice a day pilocarpine. Of course, the hemong team and PCP are involved. Serum eye drops, mainstay of treatment. All my patients, they get 20% serum eye drops. Rarely I go up to 50%. Uh, some of them, um, if they are in chronic phase, lenses, scleral lenses will help. Uh, punctal occlusion, um, uh, you, will, you will find... Um, different opinions on, on if the punctal inclusion should be done for these patients with dry eyes. Um, and if you are uh, a part of the GVHD uh, core group, which is I think run still by UIC every two years, you will, you will understand that punctal occlusion is, is not indicated in these patients. I do not occlude the puncta. Uh, we want the inflammatory stuff uh, from the eye surface to wash out or wash away and not stay on the eye. Once, to, once you occlude the puncta, it becomes difficult to control the inflammation in these patients. Topical steroids, short term, they're helpful for conjunctival involvement. I use a lot of restasis, so you can use something else, so cyclosporin, 0.05% or 0.1% if you can get it compounded. Uh, I do have access to topical tacrolimus ointment, not eye drops, but they are supposed to help as well. Surgical intervention is rarely needed, which is again fortunate. 
Uh, I, we use a lot of amniotic membrane uh, membranes in the office for patients who have poor uh, epithelia, corneal epithelium. Uh, tarsorophy, as I showed in that patient uh, who needed a corneal transplant, is needed sometimes for a persistent epithelial defects. And if you see a patient with acute GVHD, you might need to do an emergency transplant in these patients. New treatments, um, diocofazole and ribepamide, which are commonly used in Japan, also in India. They're supposed to increase the mucin production and they also have anti-inflammatory effects. Um, I did have some uh, uh, experience with these two when I was working in Hong Kong, but not anymore because they're still not available in the United States. Uh, topical immunoglobulin eye drops, fantastic work uh, from UIC again, Sandeep Jain's group. Uh, he has shown that there's significant reduction in signs and symptoms uh, in phase one, phase two clinical trials. We were a part of a clinical trial where we use a, top, a topical fibrinogen depleted human platelet lysate. Uh, this is, uh, I think we've submitted this for publication. It was a phase one, phase two clinical trial and uh, the results were quite encouraging. So that's, that's something that we are looking forward to. Topical heparin eye drops, at least three or four good papers uh, heparin at, at a low dose of uh, 100 international units per mil. Uh, it clears what we call uh, the nets, the neutrophil extracellular traps, which are supposed to worsen the ocular GVHD. Uh, heparin also has antifibrotic and immunosuppressive effects that helps in these patients. Um, at least one paper on entosplenitib, which is actually a spleen-related tyrosine kinase inhibitor um, in mice eyes. Clinical trials are underway. Um, actually, the effect on eyes um, with entosplenitib was, was sort of a, a secondary outcome of, the, of this study, but it's supposed to help um, at least mice. So we'll see what happens when it comes uh, to human beings. Prevention, early detection is the best bet for now. Um, if you are working in a big hospital, as I mentioned, stay in touch with your hemong team, let them know about ocular GVHD if they don't know that already. And we try and get these patients on a regular basis. Um, as I said, as, as one of the studies shows, get them within six months after their HSCT and do regular exam, at least have a baseline exam. One study from Mexico showed that um, uh, topical cyclosporin um, started uh, after HSCT for one year, actually had better outcomes in terms of uh, uh, development of ocular GVHD. So, you know, restasis might actually help in these patients. I don't have experience using restasis without any symptoms in these patients, but this is really interesting. So in, to summarize, ocular GVHD is common after HSCD and causes significant ocular morbidity. It can in, affect the entire ocular surface. Early detection and treatment is, is really important to control the inflammation and more is better than less in these patients. Thank you very much for your attention.